Good morning and welcome to worship at Tooksbury Congregational Church. Today is Sunday, June 13th. It's the third Sunday after Pentecost. I have a bunch of announcements for everybody. Today and from here forward, we're open for we're full capacity, no more sign-ups. Um, you still need to wear a mask though. And today we will be singing, but we will keep our masks on while we sing. Um, and we also, the offering plate, we're not going to formally do it like we used to, but down in the lower narthex as you exit is where the offering plate is, so, or you can do it online on our website. The Board of Ministries is hosting a series of events called Reconnect, Recharge, and Renew. The first event is a hike, and that will be on June 27th at 1.30. And there's also going to be a movie night. And um, th those dates will be announced later. There will also be a worship with a picnic in a park, but we'll have more details to follow on that later as well. So as a reminder, the hike will be June 27th at 1.30. There'll be more details to follow in Flash and on our website. We're having a blood, blood drive here through Children's Hospital. The blood mobile will be here on July 1st. Signups, I believe, will be through the Children's Hospital website. Um, any more, if we need more details, we can ask Debbie or Mercy. Um, Church World Service school kits, there's a Sign Up Genius on our website. We'd like to try to fill 40 school kit bags. Um, and we, it's our tradition every year. We can buy the stuff over the summer and then have it ready in the fall. And last but not least, today we were uh, saying thank you to Mercy. <laughs> but. Um, because there's so much going on today, we're gonna to have a celebration on the lawn afterwards. So please join us on the front lawn afterwards. Thank you, Mercy. Today's a fabulous day. We're all here. The chatter is so uplifting and great. Um, can we have the scholarship recipients come up? Yeah. This is so great. All these kids gonna get scholarships and go to school. <laughs> um, so these are the folks that we have loved and nurtured over the last, I don't know, 20 years in some <laughs> cases. Um, we're so pleased that they have joined us this morning and um, we couldn't be prouder of you and all of the work that you've done and um, what you're gonna continue to do. We hope that you remember that we're here um, and don't be strangers when you're in town. Um, we would love to see you and, and hear all of the great things that you're doing. All right, so on with, on with the recipients. Um, Mike Bankowski. Mike, where are you going to school? Uh, MCLA. Say it again. MCLA. MCLA. Nice. Um, Amy. Cochran. Oh, Amy's not here this morning. I, she told me that. Um, Kendra McFadden. Kendra, what are you doing? Yeah. Some great school. I can't. I can't hear a thing up here. I'm sorry. We're just going to continue there on. Go. Scad in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, Scad in Savannah, Georgia. Thank you, Baxter. You're welcome. Um, Luke McFadden. Where to, Luke? Oh, Penn, State. Penn State. Penn State. Very nice. Um, Jack Panelitis isn't here this morning. Um, Hannah San Clemente. 
Hannah, where to? Mount Holyoke, Mount Holyoke College. Beautiful area. Uh, Kate Spizzano. Kate. Middlesex Community College. I love that. Um, Adam Trudeau. Receiving for Adam is Jacob Trudeau. And Adam will be going to UMass Lowell. Um, thank you guys for um, just for all your good works and, and all, of the, um, all of the great things you've done with our church. We're, we're really blessed to have you. And um, somebody else is going to be blessed to, to room with you all. <laughs> Thank you. God bless our scholarship recipients and good morning church. The Lord be with you. I remember when I got my scholarship before going to Auburn University. It's called the William G. Chisholm Scholarship Fund, which was my father. Enough of that. This is a big day of celebration, mercy, our scholarship re recipients and our blanket recipients as our parents uh, wrap God's love around uh, our seniors. Congratulations. Hey, let's begin our worship and I, I want to offer you these centering words as we worship God together on this joyous day of celebration. See as God sees, only then can we see rightly, love as God loves only then can we love with the eyes of our heart enlightened. And now would you join me in our call to worship. Come, walk in the light of faith. Come, love in the light of faith. Come, sing the light of faith. Come, Live in the light of faith. Amen and amen. judge by outward appearances, but look on with the heart, with our eyes of faith enlightened. Help us to see your kingdom in a tiny mustard seed, and marvel at the growth you offer to all through the power of your Spirit. And now we say the prayer together that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. seated and let me take a moment of privilege to say that sounds wonderful yes <laughs> it sounds like everybody's vocal cords have been rested <laughs> hey I want to invite our seniors and families to come forward as we participate in our sacred t tradition as we wrap them in the love of blankets as their families do so please come forward Parents, about 18 years ago, most of you presented your children for baptism. You made promises to raise and nurture them in Christ's holy church, so that by teaching and example, they might be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. You have fulfilled those promises as best you are able. Now these same children are about to graduate from high school and take another step toward becoming adults. It's time for you, for your young people, and for the congregation to renew the covenant with God for their ongoing support on their faith journeys. Luke and Hannah, congratulations. How does it feel? All right, parents. <laughs> All right, parents. Will you continue to routinely lift up your children in prayer? If so, please answer. I will with God's help. And to you, the congregation, will you support and encourage these parents in the keeping of their promise and hold these young people in prayer as well? And to the graduates, will you continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism, of which you could affirm for yourself when you were confirmed? To accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression. To put your trust in the grace of Jesus Christ. To serve God in all you do. To remain faithful members of the church. To lead a Christian life. And to be, with Christ, and to be Christ's representatives in the world. If so, please answer. I will with God's help. Parents. Did you pick up your blankets? And now would you open the blankets and put it around your beautiful <laughs> child? They were ready to go, weren't they? <laughs> there was a day when your parents held you in their arms and rocked you to sleep. They cuddled you in a blanket to keep you warm, safe, and comforted. Very soon now, you'll be launching a new life, perhaps away from the safety and security of this home, family, church, and community. As you go out into the world, may this blanket be a reminder of your parents' love and nurture and warmth of this Christian community. Wherever you go, when the night is long and you feel lonely, May it help you to remember that you were never really alone. Go with God's blessing, amen. Sorry. <laughs> I would like to offer a prayer. 
So you see how much Stephanie loves these two. <laughs> so Let us all pray to together. <laughs> Almighty God, thank you for Luke and Hannah as they end this part of their journey and move on to another one, this new season in life. I thank you for their parents that have supported them through life and will continue to do so. Thank you for the covenant they have renewed with you today, thanking you for all things as they continue to follow you wherever they go. Be with these families. Be with these new college students as they go forth. Protect them, O God. And Lord, may our congregation always keep them, their parents and them, in our prayers. We're so thankful for them. We're so thankful for everything. And our prayer we give to you. In the name of Jesus, Lord and Savior, and all God's people say. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Lucinda, and please thank Dan for that. That was wonderful. Not because my kids were singing. <laughs> the scripture reading today, put my glasses on, is from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. But first, let us pray. The one who calls us to walk by faith, not by sight, is here to open our hearts that we may hear the word of God. The one who judges the heart, not outward appearances, is present to guide our ears that we may hear what is truly the word of God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for Jesus, our example. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our inspiration to understand. Amen. Paul's charge to Timothy. Now you have observed my teaching my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and my suffering, the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, but wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, 
for correction and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Mercy, for the reading of God's holy word this morning. And we're going to celebrate all these things, Mercy, and our seniors out on the front lawn uh, after the service today. I'm sure you're already ready to go, right? Uh, there's wonderful desserts and stuff like that. What, what a wonderful day of celebration. Say celebration. celebration. And, and I, I think of this season where so much is happening, so much transition you know, spring to summer, although, you know, spring and winter are trying to hold on here in New England. And uh, our, our seniors, congratulations uh, to you and your families on, the, on this wonderful occasion. To the McFadden family, I wore this today. Guess where this was handmade? Guatemala. Guatemala. And the wonderful mission work this family's done there. So I just wanted to wear this today to acknowledge that on this day of celebration. Uh, I, I, I go back to Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. I, I read this a lot. I think about it a lot because we sure do have many seasons in life, don't we? And, you know, seasons come and go, and some of us like new seasons. Some of us kind of mourn and grieve, uh, you know, but there's always a new season around the corner, and that's what we are celebrating here today. Say praise God. So, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, us preachers fall into this trap of trying to uh, maybe offer a little bit of life correction. And I want to repent of that sin here today. Trust in God. Today is the day of celebration. Say celebration. You know, some days you've got to stop and smell the coffee and just thank God for all the beautiful things happening around you. I know you want to say amen. You know, uh, Mercy, thank you for five and a half years of serving in our church. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your generosity. When I showed up here in June, I, I'd driven 20 hours. I was very tired. And uh, she realized that we were going to have some family, more family, come up after that. So she ran down to Walmart and got another blow-up bed. Thank you, Mercy, for your kindness. Thank you for all the kindness. Thank, thank you for your, your ministry here. You know, when you work at the church, I know you got a title, and I know there's a business job site to it, but it truly was ministry. Uh, greeting those that come for food insecurities to ask help from our church. Uh, being there to go down the Green Meadows with me one day and put a new light bulb up for them in one of the classrooms. Uh, just, just all the little things you did along with the big things, you know. Are you going to miss these bulletins? <laughs> you know, us, uh, uh, us proofreaders are often late getting them in right. So, uh, Mercy, thank you for your grace and that. Thank you for all the big and little things you've done in our church and the Galdo family. Thank you for supporting her, these three beautiful girls, and, and also Joe over there. So thank you so much. So here we are in a season of transition, and are you thankful for, for all these things around us? Uh, the beautiful season upon us, just, just all the things that we can celebrate. And I, I want to go back to Psalm 90 and 2, which reminds us that with all the change around us, who is still who? God is still God. Jesus is still Jesus. The Holy Spirit is still the Holy Spirit. And we are still the church. With all the things happening around us, I hope you always remind, that, remind yourself of that in your souls. Now, to the second Timothy passage. Oh, Wow. Do you hear a teacher, the Apostle Paul, passing the torch on to Timothy? He was a young, uh, a timid pastor. One time Paul told him, you, you need to settle your stomach, drink a little bit of wine. Some of you are out there celebrating that I said that. <laughs> you know, uh, keep yourself calm because, you know, uh, you're, you're leading a church family. And, and, and they're a melting pot of people. And, and, and some are going to challenge you, some are going to rejoice with you, and some are going to be in between. And, 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 you know, I want you to persevere forward because I want you to remember the teachings I gave to you. As I, for I was inspired by God, and I hope you're inspired by God through me. Isn't that beautiful? Mentorship. Say mentorship. Amen. You know, our parents have been mentors to their children. And they came up here and wrapped them in love. And they're, they're asking, hey, God... Take care of them as they continue to grow and mature. And we renewed our covenants today to support them. And the co congregation did that as well. And I want you to remember that. I want you to keep up with them. I want you to call their families. 
uh, and, and let them know that you're praying for them. Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? Do that. Yeah. You know, well, yes, we got, we got one yes back there. And that's, that's the same as amen, and I agree with you. So there you go. Keep up with them. Continue to love them uh, like that blanket that was wrapped around them today. You know, the Apostle Paul was doing the same. He really was. He loved this young pastor. He loved this young servant of God. He has su supported him. And every once in a while, he gave him a little pep talk. Because ministry is hard. Would you agree with that? It, ministry is hard. It, 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 it's our way to glorify God, to represent Jesus in the world and His teachings. And I don't know if you have uh, seen what's going on around us. It's getting harder and harder. Are we up for the challenge? Do we still want to go out there and wrap blankets of love around those that may not know the, the, the name of Christ, His grace and His mercy that He gives to all of us? You know... Uh, I, I think of my mentors in life. I think of St. Helen. She, she's the only Methodist nun I've ever met. And how what she taught me about creation, about loving people of special needs. She had this wonderful ministry that she did so. And now as a child that has special needs, uh, you know, I'm blessed to be reminded of that. I think of old Sam Abstin. He was an ornery guy. He didn't like to go to that new fandangled contemporary worship. But his family did. So we went with him. And I said, Sam, why do you go to this? Because my grandchildren and my children are there. He still supported them and loved them. And I, I will always remember that. I will think about the things that my parents taught me. I will think about the things that my grandparents taught me. I will think about laity throughout the churches I've served and the things they have taught to me. There's a point here. We're, we're all mentors to one another. Say, say mentor. Uh, we are called to serve others. We are called to love the other person more than we love ourselves. And boy, do we need reminders of that every once in a while, right? Oh my gosh, whenever I get kind of cantankerous, I might get mean. I have to sit down and pray and remind myself, uh, whom do I serve? Whom do I serve? Ouch. I want to do it my way. But I remember the things my mentors have taught me over the years, their life, the, the imperfect and, and the very good, and, and how they love Jesus. Say love Jesus. love Jesus. All right. That's wonderful. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Love being a mentor. The Apostle Paul, boy, did he love being a mentor to Timothy. He loved his grandmother and mother. Uh, he, he just loved the whole family. And he was celebrating his ministry in God and Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful story of love and friendship and mentorship. And it reminds me of how our parents mentor today, our church mentors today. And the beat goes on, the tradition moves on into the future. Say praise God. And uh, I see this in all of you. And if you need help with that, give me a call tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. <laughs> you know, we can learn a lot from the Apostle Paul, can't we? It's a mixture of beautiful, divine language as he was inspired by God to understand grace. It's also the times that Paul was very frustrated with the people whom he served. And he gave them a little pep talk. Say pep talk. And you know, those of us in the church, we are in the fold. We are the 99. We are not the one. And we need to work together to be mentors to one together, to remind ourselves of the one. Maybe that lost coin. Maybe that, that lamp that needed to be turned on at, light, at night. Who in here likes to turn on the lamp at night to see where they're going? God does that for us. If you don't turn it on, good luck. In my house, you may trip or, or step on a piece of Lego. And that's painful. That's painful. I saw a t-shirt that, I saw a t-shirt this past year that says stepping on a piece of Lego was like the year 2020. <laughs> Let's just admit it. Over the years, I've, I've had the blessing to be mentors to other pastors. And I find just great, wonderful joy in doing it. To see them mature as I have matured as we all continue to mature.
mature in Christ. To learn from them where they've come from, how did God call them? Did they run, try to run for years like me from this call, or did they just answer and say, heck yeah, I'm going to do it? You have those stories too, don't you? Mentorship, working with others. Maybe you didn't quote scripture passage after scripture passage, but you loved them like Jesus, right? You know, a lot of times, maybe we don't step into mentorship because we think it's going to be hard and a great time of commitment. But mentorship maybe is simply picking up the phone and letting somebody know that they're loved. Ring, ring, hello. You're loved. <laughs> you know, I'm doing this like those old Tommy phones. Maybe I need to get my phone and put it in front of me as people see my face and say, hey, I love you like Jesus. However you do it, it's great with God. Whom are you being a mentor with today? Who do you love like Jesus? The Apostle Paul loved people. He was a very, very forgiven man from that time he was on Damascus Road as he persecuted Christians. Wow, do you see this complete 180? It wasn't a 170, it wasn't a 160, it wasn't a 150, it wasn't a 90. It was a complete 180. And he stepped into that row and he planted churches and he became mentors to people like Timothy. What a great life to admire. Even when we read some of his writings and his epistles where he got a little ornery, cantankerous, and said a few things to those people. But he did it in love. He did it in charity. And he reminds us of things that we need to know of in Scripture. Let me come over here. Let me, let me read those again. So, so what do we know what God's Word does? It inspires. It's useful for what? For teaching. It's always teaching us. For reproof, for correction. Okay, I said I repented of that at the beginning of my sermon. I want to take it back. Paul says you can offer correction in love. <laughs> Praise be to God. For training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. I love that word equipped. Say equipped. Are we equipping one another as we love our neighbor, as we love ourselves? Are we in Christian charity as we do that? Are we listening? To our brother, our sister. Are we listening? Are we loving? Are we a mirror image of Jesus Christ in our life? That's how the world should see us. We need to do a better job these days. We need to do a much better job. Maybe we hear these words from Paul. Is, is Paul being a mentor to you today? Who was our ultimate mentor? Jesus. Who was God? in our understanding. Whom empowers us here today? The Holy Spirit helping us understand. Sounds like a mentor to me. And our great God of creation throughout the history of what we know in Scripture, always forgiving, a little mad at times. Would you agree with me on that? But very forgiving in rebuilding that covenant when we fail. Sounds like a great mentor to me. Again, thank you, Mercy, for your service here. Luke, Hannah, for those who can be here today, thank you for being a part of that journey. We continue to look forward for, for you to report and let us know how it's going. I think that when Jesus sent out the two-by-two two to do ministry in the world, they went out and many great things happened. People were healed. They were invited into homes. They were also rebuked from time to time. Seniors, hey, it's okay. It's okay if people don't agree with you. It's okay. But hey, you can still love people like Jesus. You know one of the greatest things we can do, like Paul, to be a mentor? is to love people like Jesus. Like Jesus loved Paul, like Paul loved Timothy. Do you see how it works? It's like stepping stones. It's like taking one of those flat rocks, maybe up to a beautiful lake in New Hampshire. Right, anybody good at this as you try to skip it? Boom, 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 boom. You ever see those puddles that come from it? Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're really big.
Good job if you can do that. I'm still working on it. We may go to New Hampshire today. I think I'm going to practice again. Hopefully nobody's in the water. <laughs> but you know that, 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 that stone, that flat stone, it, when it makes that puddle, what does it do? It, it reverberates around it. And that wave goes out. That's what happens when we love like Jesus, when we are mentors. This goes out. And it goes out, and it goes out, and it goes out. Thankful for the scripture today. Thankful for Psalm 90, verse 2, that reminds us that God is always God, even in seasonal tra uh, transitions, when our life goes on to another stage. Thankful for the writer of Ecclesiastes that reminded us of these beautiful seasons in life, and you know what? We live in a time where a season is transitioning to a new season. But remember that God is still God. Be a mentor. Share Jesus with others. Be the church. Say church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. All right. And for our next hymn this morning, we have number 450, Be Still and Know. Oh, and if anyone can, everyone can stand. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. It's so nice to see so many faces. I'm going to start with some celebrations. I heard that Evelyn Frazier is turning 95 this week. So happy birthday to Evelyn. A celebration of seeing Alice Golan walk into this sanctuary. So amen to that. And we celebrate Mercy's service and love to us all. Thank you, Mercy. Mary Jane is asking for prayers for her father-in-law, Kevin, and his caregivers. Joanne is asking for prayers for her neighbor, Ashley, who has an upcoming one-month hospital stay for new treatments for her stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mac is asking for prayers of condolence, <clears throat> excuse me, and comfort for his Michigan friends, Gary and Denise, whose 95-year-old father passed away yesterday. We ask for prayers for all those involved and affected by the mass shootings in Austin, Texas and Savannah, Georgia this past week. Are there any other prayers in the sanctuary? Not that is, oh, mercy. Mercy is asking for prayers and celebration of thank you to all of us in the church for helping her and celebrating her and being there for her through tears and laughter. <laughs> Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this day, 
this day of worship, this day of prayer, and this day of celebrations. You know, God, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for Hannah and Luke, who's with us today. We thank you for those that couldn't be with us, those seniors moving on to this new part of life, this new season. Lord, be with them and guide them in the power of your Holy Spirit in all that they do. Lord, we thank you for all of your beautiful creations that we pray for today, for those that are going through so much in their life. Lord, I know you're giving them your love from heaven. May we as their friends and their family share the image of Christ with them to let them know that they are in that love. Lord, help us be the church to be a blanket of grace in our community of love, of your mercy, reaching out to those that are, that are hurting, those that feel like they're on the outside looking in for those that you call to come home and be in my presence. Lord, all the things going on, I wish we could just take this blue candle out of our, off our Lord's table. And, but Lord, we pray for all the violence and those that have been affected. Well, we're all affected, oh God. Help us all to find solutions so people can live and not be hurt. We pray for our nation and our world. We continue our prayers for the caregivers, for those that are helping, hoping to bring healing to those battling the virus, COVID-19, for those that are doing their best to love their neighbor and protect them, uh, just for showing us a way out of this, a light at the end of the tunnel. We thank you, O oh God. O oh God, on this day of celebration, Thank you for allowing us to lift beautiful voices as we sing hymns and songs that we love and cherish because we do it to glorify you in your Son's holy name. Now, oh God, we thank you for our offering today. May we be a blessing to you as we give every bit of ourself to you in service so the world will know you more and more. Thank you for this offering this day. Help us to use it in service to you. These prayers we lift to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people say, All right. Um, actually, I wanted to say something really fast before I start the next hymn. I wanted to say thank you for everyone who's listened to me over the, the pandemic and heard all the sermons uh, when the, everything was virtual. Uh, and thank you for coming today. And it's wonderful to hear everyone's voice. So thank you for singing with me. Um, so for our final hymn today, we have number 723, For the Fruit of All Creation. Oh, and if you can please stand. <laughs> Oh, 
So I'm going to give you a choice. Would you like to stand six feet away or, or come a little closer? All right, I'm fine. All right. All right. We're so thankful for mercy. Let, let us hear some applause out there. <laughs> mercy, we, we're going to miss you here, but we know you're going to be out there in the views with us and worshiping and so thankful for your family. I'm glad you're going to be with them and have, have a lot more time with them. Uh, no more call forwarding to our house. <laughs> no more bulletins. No more bulletins. And if you choose to go down the Green Meadow and change lot books, we will not stop you. All right. All right. Helping our trustees out. All right. Uh, I want to offer a prayer for mercy. Gracious God, thank you so much for the servant, your servant, that has led us in so many ways these five and a half years. Keep her and family safe as they go into this new season. Thank you for how she cherishes being a mother to her three beautiful girls and a wife to her husband, Joe. Bless them and keep them wherever they go. We're so thankful they'll still be here with us. And Lord, again, thank you for her ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now would you, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to walk out with me today. So you stand there and we'll let Steph do her job. Let us pray. God, we love you, and may we leave this, this beautiful sanctuary, this holy place you have given to us to go and serve you in all that we do. May we be a bright light to the world, a mentor to those that feel hurt these days. Help us to be the church that you, that you have called us to be here in Tewksbury. And now we go forward in the name of the Father, the Son, and the what? Amen.